Welcome everybody to episode 15 of The Craft Life. So um, this episode is going to be done a little bit different. Um, I freaking love this place and there's no better way to start this episode than with a story. Um, so it was about February 19th. Uh, me and my buddy were out, you know, uh, brewery hopping. He was like, have you ever heard of this uh, brewery called Bangin' Banjos? I was like, sure, have it. He was like, cool. And I was like, well, do they have stouts? He was like, he laughed at me. He was like, do they have stouts? He was like, come on, man, let's go check it out. So I remember I sat right there in that chair right there. And uh, Matt, I believe, was the bartender for the night. First, first time coming here. And he was like, what would you like? And I was like, let me try your best stout. All right, so he poured it in an eight ounce glass. And uh, man, I took my first sip and I literally yelled, man, what the fuck is this? And I asked him, was this brewed here? You know, I was like, I never tasted something like this before. He was like, yep. And I was like, let me get me another one. He was like, you haven't even finished your first one. I took one sip. I was like, bring me another one. <laughs> so uh, let's for like fast forward 30 minutes later. And seriously, like 30 minutes later, I put down um, Adam, this might be a little bit of embarrassing, but I literally put down eight pints of this home again um, because I really didn't know this stat was going to be here tomorrow. To be fair, they were probably half pints. Oh, they're half pints. Okay. So I put down, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a better thing, right? So I put down like uh, eight of these half half pints and because I was like, I don't know if this is going to be here tomorrow and I got to consume this, this liquid gold as best as I can. So um, another long story short, after 30 minutes, I called my girlfriend. She came and picked me up. I spent the rest of the mor the next morning actually nursing that hangover and trying to feel better so I can get back in here the next day. So uh, ever since that day, I literally come here three times a week, sometimes twice in one day over the weekends. Um, so this place has a really special place in my heart. I love this place. I love Adam. And uh, man, thank you so much for you know sitting down with me and let's chop it up, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks uh, for having me. Uh, anyone who doesn't know me, he uh, didn't intro me, but I'm Adam. I'm, from... I'm, a, I'm about to intro you. I got you. I got you right now. <laughs> hey, I to it. But there, yeah, I'll let you do it. It's your show. All right. I appreciate that. Without further ado, the man of the hour, the man I've been talking about, which didn't forget to introduce him. Uh, I get to wrap it with my man, Adam Feingold, co-owner, founder of Pompano Brewing, formerly known as Bangin' Banjo. So thank you once again, man, for letting us come in here, you know, and hang out with you and uh, pick your mind about everything, dude. Of course, the pleasure is mine. All right. So let's just dive into here before we get started and, um, you know, talk about the topic of the day, which is obviously is going to be talking about rebranding because you guys are currently in the rebranding process. If you guys don't know, um, you guys initially created the name Bangin' Banjos and now you're shifting and pivoting a little bit for, uh, um, Pompano Beach uh, Brewing, which is great. So um, before we even get into there, like, so what is a rebrand? You know, a rebrand is a process of changing your image. Um, it's a marketing strategy that gives a new name, symbol, or change to an already established brand. And that's where we're going to get to today. But before we dive into all that, uh, let's discuss about you, man. How did you get, like, what was your background before you even started brewing? What were you doing before this? Let's hear it all, man. So, uh, I always like to joke and, you know, whenever I'm asked that question, there was that meme going around on Facebook not too long ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that guy who slept through out high school yeah. and then uh, owns a business now. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> um, I was in food service and hospitality uh, since I'm 15 years old. Always took to the management side. But I mean, I kind of did my own thing. And um, back when the Mellow Mushroom opened in Del Rey, uh, a little ways back, I uh, I, I had the opportunity to work there a little bit and they had a lot of beers on tap and it started driving my interest. And uh, next thing I know, I I moved uh, back to Gainesville, uh, where I was at for only a year prior and started working towards a food and resource economics degree. I, uh, I always wanted to open a brewery, um, you know, since that point, I was like, you know what? I love craft beer. I want to make it and uh, started homebrewing it with my best friend. So I had some hospitality and production management, um, you know, experience through working at Aramark and Compass and going to school and uh, just previous places of work. Um, and, you know, push came to shove and uh, eventually uh, time was right. And we started working on opening up a uh, Bang and Banjo in uh, 2014. 2014. So from the time that you guys came up with the, the concept of creating banjo, Bang and Banjos, what led to the name Bang and Banjo? So the story goes, uh, so back when we were home brewing in our little, uh, you know, house in Gainesville built in the, you know, it was built in like 1920 or something. Well, the house? Uh, the house was built, yeah. Oh, and we, our whole kitchen was just like 
it was a like home brewery, Pico Brewery. We used to joke, you know, <laughs> never had food there. We always ate out and, uh, you know, uh, fridge was full of beer. We bought, it was just crazy. But um, there, the banjo player out of uh, my uh, two best friends, uh, he went, it was, uh, he's a big Steelers fan. And uh, he was at uh, away for the Super Bowl, the year the Cardinals and the Steelers were playing. And mm-hmm. we were like, you know, what? So we usually brewed Sundays. And we we're like, you know, what? we're just going to dick around, whatever. Just clean up, uh, go do your thing. And uh, we actually brewed a black IPA because his birthday was coming up in a couple months. So we had all these chest freezers and things that we were controlling fermentation with. We brewed a black IPA without his knowledge and hid it in a closet, you know, and we're like, how good is this going to turn out? But, you know, the yeah. gesture is what matters. For sure. A uh, month and a half later, his birthday's coming up. We're like, hey, happy birthday. Here's this beer. We brewed for you Super Bowl weekend. Uh, we're going to tap it. We threw uh, our house at the time. We had the five tap homebrew kegerator. We nice. threw a shindig for him, had the beer on tap, and we called it the Bang and Banjo because he was a banjo player for Greenland is Melting, okay. uh, a band that was around back then. And um, the beer has since evolved a lot uh, since then for the better. Um, but the name always stuck and it, it kind of fell to our roots. I always, uh, when I moved to Gainesville, for the first time in 2006 or seven, I think it was 2007. Um, I always loved the Southern hospitality and the Southern charm you found North of Orlando that you just don't get in South Florida. Yeah. So when we were trying to come up with our original brand down here, we were trying to figure out what made the most sense. What could we contribute to South Florida? Um, and we came up with bang and banjo and, uh, built everything around that. Nice, nice, nice. So uh, another question I got for you, man. What's your favorite style of beer to drink? The one in front of me. The one in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and what's that? Um, which, whatever. Whenever I'm uh, asked to put a, a, you know, for a drink, it's yeah. just, uh, you know, what are my choices? What am I feeling right now? Gotcha. Uh, yesterday I was dropping uh, a keg off to a brewery for an anniversary party mm-hmm. and uh, um I had their lightest beer on tap, and then I had their barrel aged imperial stout that they so were. Just, so I mean, just whatever, whatever I'm in the mood for right there, that's my favorite beer. All right, awesome. So, what's your favorite uh, style of beer to brew? For my favorite style to brew would most definitely have to be uh, lagers. To be honest, nice. Mostly because I haven't done it so much. I've only brewed a lager four times ever, oh, wow. and one okay. of those times was home brewing. Um, but I enjoy it. I, I really like the fermentation side of things. Um, you know, I like the simplicity and, uh, I'm someone who really, really enjoys traditional styles of beer. Nice. So, um, I like being able to brew something so clean where all the flaws can potentially be exposed. Sounds good, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, and for everyone who's asking me, um, especially myself, uh, when are you going to be brewing home again? Again. again. Are we talking? So is that question? When are we brewing home again? Or when are you brewing home again? Because there are two different beers, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely two different beers. So uh, when are you brewing either home or home again? again. So <laughs> to be fair, um, Will, who uh, we hired from uh, Flagler Brewing, as uh, I basically handed him the keys to the uh, the system, if you will. Personally, I think he's a better stout brewer than uh, I was or am. Um, so he. Uh, so are we going to do a uh, vanilla? Infused bourbon barrel uh, imperial stout, absolutely, but uh, it'll be Will's recipe. Gotcha. So slightly different from home. Yeah. Uh, I don't know or home again, which is they're literally the same thing, but uh, you know we just named it home again because we brewed home and then home again. So it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Speaking of, I have a keg of home again sitting back there. Um, is that I'm, for sale or what's going I mean, on? it could be, yeah, you know, I'll sidebar, take, sidebar. <laughs> sidebar. I'll take, I'll take it off your hands, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, but, um, I don't know what we were going to do with it, but, uh, it's sitting there waiting for something. So, uh, sounds good, man. So um, hopefully I can just take that thing home for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, in today's episode, it's all about the rebranding process. Um, before we got in there, we add a little bit of context of who Adam was, um, how he started this place, a little bit of background on the name. But what's super important today is um, I think about the rebranding process and the process he's actually going through today as we speak um, is a continual 
process until, you know, it's going to be fine tuned, but it's always going to be something that you're going to constantly do, um, stay relevant. And um, today, you know, uh, for me, a rebrand is something that's um, obvious and it feels very pressing. Other times it can be something very subtle. Um, in this case, you know, something that they really decided and what you're going to find out firsthand on why the name changed and why the entire like, listen, it looks beautiful. The new the new vision, the new where you guys are going with it. I absolutely love it. So without trying to break it up, I want to talk to you all about the rebranding process, why you started it, what 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 indications that you got that it was time for it. And um, yeah, man, go ahead for it. So uh, a big uh, uh, a big uh, hunk of meat to slice at here. But uh, let's start from the beginning. So we opened up, uh, I believe the official date was July 20th, 2015. So uh, our soft open date, we invited some friends and family uh, hang out. And uh, I always say that's the first day we uh, took money at our register for pints. We were pouring from our draft. Um, so good feeling, right? Yeah, I mean, it was cool. We did it. We opened, you know, um, and we we had a vision for Bang and Banjo at the time. And over the course of the next two years, you know, we always felt like the, the name was kind of hindering us, um, you know, just from being a, a spot in South Florida. And I mean, don't get me wrong. There are people who love the name. It's a memorable name. Sure. Um, you know, telling someone my email address over the phone was, you know, always a nightmare. But, you know, aside from that, uh, I mean, loved and embraced it. I love bluegrass. I love folk. I don't play the banjo myself. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I truly do. With that being said, two years into it, in 2017, we, uh, we felt we needed a change. Um, at that point in time, though, we never really felt like we had the resources. There weren't as many breweries in South Florida as there were today. So we decided to double down and we did some rebranding. And if you look at some of our older uh, bottles and some of our older branding, uh, we started to tweak and dial in the Bang & Banjo branding a little more. Fast forward to 2020. You know, we're doing our thing. COVID hits. You know, we're hanging by a thread and, you know, just when we think things are going to get better, um, breweries are forced to close, but restaurants can stay open. And let me tell you, that shutdown that shut breweries and bars down, but not restaurants, hurt us more than the whole shutdown itself. Yeah. At least before we were on the same uh, playing field as everyone. And, uh, you know, after that, it was just like, hey, you don't have food and uh, you can't be open. So. You know, we started to put everything on the table and evaluate every aspect of the business. And we we're like, you know what? If we're going to make a change, now's the time. Had a market study done, brought in a, uh, a branding agency. And we said, man, um, you know, uh, as much as ABV and style of beer are important, we found that through the study that the third most uh, important thing is locality. And anyone who knows me knows I've been a, a champion for Pompano Beach. Um, you know, I wanted to open here when we first started looking for places in 2013. Um, you know, I've always championed. I was uh, were a member of Chamber of Commerce and um, for Pompano. And I've always done what I could to promote the city. And um, we're looking at naming and, you know, just based on the market study, we're like, let's be Pompano Beach Brewing Company. Let's do it. You know, let's own the city and let's own the name. And I, I love it. So we had this uh, branding agency come in, do everything um, that, you know, taught me a lot about branding. And, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, they just did a fantastic job with everything. I, I love everything they've done. And, um, you know, I haven't been this excited about the brand uh, since the first time we opened and the then our little, you know, change up of the brand two years after we opened. So what was that like that, that process initially like as far as when, OK, so you sat down with the branding agency, you were like, all right, we're going to go with this name, um, the colors, the feel, the logo. Like how did that what, what were you inspired by by that? So uh, being that we were changing the name to Pompano Beach Burn Company, we realized that we'd have to shift, uh, you know, our feel, our ambience, our, our culture to mm -hmm. a more nautical, oceany, you know, South Florida sort of vibe. Um, and, you know, it was a hard pill to swallow from our cabiny Southern charm sort yeah. of feel, but I, I like nautical, right? I'm that guy that, uh, I, I like, I like to be on boats. 
I like to be around the water, just not in the water, right? <laughs> so, I mean, even the interior of our tap room, uh, whenever we're doing a phased approach with this, but, you know, we're going to keep the ship lap that's on our walls, but we're going to paint it white, probably sand it down a little bit, give you more of that nautical feel rather than, hey, we're, you know, in the under the ocean here kind of feel. Um, and I'm no expert at branding or anything of that For sort, sure. but... Um, you know, the branding agency gave us several options and they were able to, you know, based on those options and our input and feedback, uh, guide us to what uh, what you see now with the new branding. So a couple of points that you brought up location. Um, can you elaborate on that? Because you said like location is very important and it's a success for one of the breweries. I think was that the three points that you brought up was product labeling and location. Was that the three? So it's um, what's important. So as part of the market study, mm -hmm. what um, decides people's beer making decisions, first and foremost, are, um, you know, the style of beer and how much alcohol in it. Those are kind of go hand in hand. Those you know, if you're a light beer drinker, you know, you don't want anything over 5% and you're probably looking for a light lager, a blonde, a cream ale, Kolsch, the list goes on, right? Whereas if you're an IPA drinker, you're probably looking at six and a half, seven percent um you know and you want you want hops right so the, those two are what they are and that's all about the product whereas people since the pandemic have been buying local they want to support local businesses they want to support people in their backyard they want to support people who's who needs that income to send their kids to you know band camp or dance school or college you know um you know, not just buying uh, some guys, you know, third or fourth yacht, if you will. For sure. Um, and, uh, you know, that we, we really took that, uh, that, that to heart with uh, as far as locality is concerned. Cool, cool, cool. So next thing you said, you broke this down into um, phases. So the first phase is was the online and kind of the digital approach plus the cans. Or can you just kind of break that down a little bit? So when we were sure and when we uh, started looking at everything, even before the rebranding, we realized what we were currently doing, our current business model that was extremely taproom focused, mm -hmm. um, wasn't going to work anymore. Not to say it couldn't work in six months to a year, or not to say that we couldn't, you know, hang by a thread, but we knew we needed to do more. So we knew that distribution, we needed to start leaning on heavily. Um, we brought in some new equipment. We brought in a canning line. And uh, we knew that we wanted to can beer and get it out in the market, uh, grocery stores, liquor stores, you know, whoever uh, can buy our beer. And uh, so that's when the name change came about is, hey, you know, do we want to stick with Bang & Banjo or do we want to, you know, uh, look at something else? And we locality and the market study, we we're like, all right, let's do it. Okay, nice. So what is uh, phase two of this is going to look like? So phase one was make the beer, put it in cans, put labels on those cans. And uh, beers uh, are Moodoo Voodoo and our um, previously OJ Session, now named Southlight, uh, those out in the market. Um, but phase two is going to be redoing our tap room and, nice. you know, uh, getting everything in here together. Okay. We had the product and uh, we had the ability to sell the product uh, outside of our tasting room. So we wanted to do that. Nice. And nice. get that going. All right. Perfect. So everyone's looking forward to it. So also with their production side of it, you obviously made some changes back there. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. So um, I, I don't know how many people are familiar with uh, brewing, but uh, just for a sake of measure, one barrel is equivalent to 31 gallons. So we were a three barrel brewery prior. Um, in bring on a canning line, a three barrel system isn't really good enough or it's, it makes it tough. And we're currently working on that while canning beer, but we brought in a, uh, a seven barrel system that has some bells and whistles. Um, and we'll kind of act like a 15 barrel system just because we bought it with some bells and whistles. Nice. So, um, we're basically, uh, technically speaking, doubling the size and our ability to produce, um, but really, uh, quintupling. Nice, nice. So there's going to be some exciting changes going on here. Absolutely. And we're still working through that now. Permitting sucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> that's that's a course of everything. Um, also, the tap room is going to be upgraded and excited about that, too. Um, are you guys going to keep that kind of uh, wood top that you have on the tap room? Um, I believe we're going to keep the, the wood tops. It's black walnut from uh, the 
the bar itself is from New York, mm-hmm. and the original uh, Tap Tower, as they're called, it's the same wood, black walnut from upstate New York. Whereas the we added another set of taps later on, and that's a uh, black walnut from Michigan. Nice, nice. So, so there's going to be some really exciting changes going on here. Um, lastly, let's talk about a couple of events. I know I see that you guys are doing a lot more events now. I mean, obviously, COVID had did a damper on everybody's events. Um, are there going to be any staple events coming up in the future or how do you guys are dealing with events? So we're really, really just trying to work on building our tap room back up to the best that we can. Mm. We've got a weekly cornhole, weekly disc golf uh bi-weekly uh comedy shows nice. and uh we're gonna start doing live music again and all of it's outside as much as we can we're looking at we added an outdoor patio area and we're even going to be looking to upgrade that further nice. um you know as soon as you know we're comfortable with it and the brand is relaunched we plan on going back to doing uh quarterly beer fest and much larger event oh, formats sure. that we used to do oh nice yeah i'm excited about that so um, just to piggyback off a couple of events that you guys did in the past um for people who don't know do you want to tell a couple of the events that you guys used to do in the past that kind of uh helped shape you know the homebrew culture and the, you know the beer culture down here sure uh i mean one of our original ones was the iron banjo it was a homebrew event we did where we told homebrewers only use these ingredients brew whatever beer you want and for your beer and you know, did voting, gave away prizes. It was pretty cool. So we're looking at that. We've got our Anything Goes event, which is basically a small sour beer fest that uh, we used to do. And during COVID, we did Anything To Goza. We package it in eight ounce cans and uh, that uh, went great. Um, so we don't have the ability to do the eight ounce cans anymore, but uh, you know, maybe we'll look at doing something else now that we have uh, a uh, larger full-fledged uh, canning line. Nice. And then um, we also at our anniversary party, we did uh, some nostalgia personified events with uh, some of the old Nickelodeon shows. Um, we had the home concert that we did with the Copper Tones. Nice. Um, the first time we did home, they released a vinyl and a new album and we paired it, made a beer. And that's where that all came from. So the oh, Copper awesome. Tones have a song called Home that, uh, you know, we did with the beer. So it was super cool to do that. I got to go check out that song. Yeah, it's on Spotify. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right. You guys heard it. So um, lastly, the tagline that you guys are going for, what is that? So the tagline is um, cold cans, warm welcomes. Okay. So that comes from uh, Pompano Beach. They uh, they Their motto is Florida's warmest welcome. Uh, we wanted to play off of that. We uh, we knew that we wanted to incorporate something from Pompano into our tagline. And, you know, cold cans are good and warm welcomes are good, too. So why not put them together? Nice, nice, nice. But um, so we're going to wrap up the show. I just want to say personally, thank you for everything you have done. Um, thank you for what you do for the beer culture. Thanks for putting amazing product out there. Um, thanks for the amazing events. And uh, thank you for home. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much. No, thank you for having me. It's uh, always a pleasure. Um, and uh Thanks for supporting us, ultimately. Absolutely. So if you guys haven't been, definitely need to come out and um, check out Pompano Beach Brewing, which is located over at 3200 Northwest 30, uh, 23rd uh, Ave. And that's going to be in Suite 500, Pompano Beach, Florida, 33069. Uh, Their website is pompanobeachbrewing.com. Untapped, you can find them at Pompano Beach Brewing as well as on Facebook. On Instagram, you're going to do Pompano underscore beach underscore brewing underscore company. Um, and that's where you guys need to definitely connect, see what's happening in their tap room, see what's happening back in the production, see the new products, how they look, the labels. Um, the whole marketing is freaking fire. Great job. Thank you. Um, so to the Craft Life community, keep supporting local craft breweries. Peace and love. We out.